Hi, I'm Sarah Story. Welcome to Lacol. I'm Chris Opie, and this video is all about mental preparation. We spend hours and hours preparing our bodies physically for an event, but an often overlooked aspect of our performance is our mental preparation. I once read that cycling is 90% mental and 10% physical. And if you're up against someone that's physically very similar to you, it's that that's going to make the difference. So Sarah, what does it mean to be mentally prepared for an event? Well, for me, men being mentally prepared is that you have that clarity of mindset that you know exactly what you're going to do. Um, you might not always know exactly how the event will play out, particularly in a road race, for example, but in the more controllable events like a road time trial or um, an individual pursuit, for example, on the track or even a team pursuit, you'll have a formula that you're going to follow throughout that race. Within a road race, you'll have a principles of how you're going to race that race and how you're going to react to other people and their reactions within the race. So you'll have a principle of performance and you'll be mentally prepared to execute that on race day. How far out ahead of an event would you start preparing for it mentally? For me, I think mental preparation is, is always there. It needs to be. You need to be in the right mindset for training apart from anything else. But each training session is a, has a purpose towards a race day. So I think mental preparation, when it's there all the time, it becomes sort of a natural habit that you get into. Uh, and for me, I, I'm mentally preparing when I'm executing training sessions in a, in a particular way, because the reason I'm doing a particular training set or a particular set of efforts will relate always to something that's going to happen in a race. So whether it's a specific race that I've raced before, um, or whether it's an event that's going to happen in a new city or a new velodrome, then there's always an opportunity to involve mental preparation whilst you're training. Um, so for me, it's there all the time. So you combine your physical training with your mental preparation as well, which is really, it makes sense because you're busy already. Why not apply that thought to it as well? How much time each week are you dedicating towards thinking about your mental preparation? I think um, you, you're probably spending almost the whole of your physical training mentally being prepared. I don't think you need to sit down and, and kind of have a, a date in the diary with it, because if it's coming naturally to you, then it's always there. It's always in the background. It's always an, an important component. Um, it, it's always about having the right mindset to be set up for a training session so that therefore you're practicing the skills that you'll need on race day. Going into a specific effort, especially on the track, it's an opportunity to, to train at race pace. So you need to be in the right frame of mind to, to be able to you know, execute that particular set in that, at that particular speed. So I, for me, it's always there. And I think that therefore probably means that it's not necessarily a 24 seven thing because you do need to kind of relax and just enjoy riding your bike. And obviously surroundings like this allow some of that kind of mental calm, but mental calm is also about mental preparation. It's about having the right mindset for the right situation. So it's not always being up hyped and, and ready to kind of explode as a sprinter, for example. It's also about knowing how to, how to quieten your mind and to clear it of you know, distractions. And that for me is also mental preparation because you're enabling your brain to function in the most effective way to deliver the performance you need physically. Are there any mechanisms that you put in place on race day to help maintain that really good mental preparation? So for me, for example, it was listening to a playlist when I was warming up on the turbo trainer. Do you do anything like that? No, I don't have any um, kind of external um, mechanisms that come into play. For me, it's all, we're all about rehearsal and reminding myself exactly how I'm going to execute the event playing through it step by step in my mind, knowing exactly the time slots of the day. So I'll prepare by um, having a start time for my warm up or ultimately arriving at the venue and all the things you do before you get on the warm up bike, but getting to the getting through that process. So those those little steps, those small stepping stones in each one of those, you tick them off and you're getting closer and closer to the start line. Throughout that time, you know exactly how you're going to execute from the start line. Um, and by constantly rehearsing that and having that clarity of mindset, you have purpose to your day, you know exactly what you're going to do. And for me, I quite like soaking up the atmosphere around me. It's one less thing to forget, headphones or iPod or whatever it is now these days. I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch. I used to be a cassette player or a, a, a CD player. Um, but apart from that, for me, it's always all about being within my own mind. And I think the strength of that mindset is something that plays out really usefully to me because most people have something else that they also rely on, which is absolutely fine if it works for you. But for me, I find that having to rely on something else doesn't work. So I prefer to kind of soak up the atmosphere um, and then just focus on those stepping stones that I've set out for myself. Different events have different physical demands. Is that also the same for mental preparation? 
I think when you're looking at the different events, the, the way that you'll rehearse for them will potentially be will potentially change, but the principles of how you're going to work with your own mind is, is probably the same. For me, I work very well off this the rehearsal, the having that plan, having that structure, having the confidence to know I can change that structure if I need to, to make a good decision under pressure, and um, to make the correct decision under pressure and to go with it and not to worry. I think sometimes people have that kind of um, lack of confidence, haven't made the right decision, and then that wastes a little bit of time. So that instead of executing the decision or the change, um, for me, at the games in Tokyo, we had to change the gear. We had to go to a bigger gear. I was in such good shape. The um, the atmospheric conditions were in such a place that it meant that I was going to be able to ride a bigger gear. So psychologically, that was quite a big demand for me to think about because for such a long time in the run-up to the that particular point, I'd been rehearsing on a certain gear size, how that felt from a cadence perspective. So the interaction of the physical with the mental is huge. Um, because that gear then felt too small, I had to have the confidence to know I could I could, you know, push the bigger gear all the way to the finish. Um, and so within, you know, two or three days of the actual race, I was going back to rehearsing with a slightly different feeling under my legs. So all of those things um, can come into play and you have to have the confidence to execute and make a decision and stick to it, but also have the presence of mind that you need to be flexible if you need to make another decision further on. And that's where it can get very complicated. So having good mental strategies and confidence is really important. Can you give us an example of when your mental preparation went 100% to plan and how that felt? I think most recently, probably um, the individual pursuit in, in Tokyo. Um, I'd obviously had some challenges in the run up where I was needing to adjust the gearing, but I had to believe in that. And I had to know that on race day that it was gonna go really well. And I went into the velodrome and it was a mindset thing because we knew there was gonna be no crowd. So we had to be able to compete in an empty room, which I've talked about in the past, about how you deal with a big crowd. You have to be prepared to, to, to deal with no crowd. We got no crowd. But then I saw the other competitors riding way faster than they'd ever ridden. And I knew I was in equally as good, if not better shape. So then suddenly I got really excited about how fast could I ride? You know, how much better could I be than I was last time I rode um, at the Paralympic Games? And the ultimate, um, reaction was 4.3 seconds quicker and I'd never ever anticipated I wanted to dip under 3 minutes 30 I'd anticipated 329 but when I got that 327 I was like it was nearly a 326 um, and then I was able to go even faster towards the catch in the final so that was a perfect day. So to summarise mental preparation is something that we could all think about when we're riding our bikes we don't necessarily need to set any time aside outside of training on the bike to think about it but it can be really effective to helping us achieve our goals. Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. We look forward to seeing you in another video again soon. Thank you.